What's up guys, thanks for coming by. If you're familiar with my channel, you do know I'm also reviewing AMC's Nosferatu that just started this Sunday. But this Wednesday we had The Handmaid's Tale season three just begin and I wanted to review this one because I've been with this show since season one. But before I get started, I wanna ask you guys, what do you think of this season so far? What do you think of the show as a whole? Because I think this is one of the shows of this decade that is gonna go down to history as one of the best but I want to hear from you guys, tell me your opinions. And don't forget, click on that subscribe button, click on the bell notification to hear any more notifications from me for your future enjoyment. Before giving you my review on season three, just my thoughts on the series as a whole. I didn't have a YouTube channel when season one and two premiered, but I have been on board ever since. I didn't know this show was based on a book, which was even more intriguing. Now I own the book and it's just cool to know they used the source material primarily in season one and they kind of ran their own way with season two and beyond. And I think of this show the same way people think about Game of Thrones with the characters and how invested they get into the show. And I've seen Game of Thrones and I'm not as invested in the characters as other people were. And I wasn't upset with season eight as much as other people were, but I can definitely relate to being invested with storylines and characters in this show, just like they were. There's people that I, were, I was mad about when they killed them off, characters that I hated at the beginning that I loved and vice versa. But this is a show that really keeps me entertained, especially with its main characters, with June of all. She's my favorite one of them all with everything she has to go through. And I just see this show lasting for a while. I mean, you can tell that there's gonna be a point where this show is gonna have to end because it kind of, in a way, kind of repeats things over and over because just when you think she's out of the hole, she gets herself right into another one, into another situation, but they do it in a different way that makes it interesting. But I hope the show does last for a while, but we're on season three, and so far it's at a good start. It's been see three episodes that they aired on Hulu, and usually that's what most of Hulu's original series do. They give you a few extra episodes, and I like to review an episode at a time with the shows that I review. But with Netflix and some Hulu shows, they kind of give you the either the whole show at once or a few episodes at once. So today, just gonna give you my quick rundown of the first three episodes. Now I'm not giving away too much and spoiling it for others, so I'm gonna be very vague, at least with the description telling you what's going on in these three episodes. Mostly I'm just gonna tell you how I felt about it, where I think this season's going, as well as future seasons, and just give you my thoughts on specific characters that I felt stood out within these three episodes. I have three of them. Now this season begins exactly where the last one left off, where we saw June with her baby and Emily. They're all about to get on the truck and June gives the baby to Emily. She stays behind, something that I was so pissed about. I'm uh, thinking, why don't you get on the truck? But she needs to stay to get her other daughter, which makes complete sense. I mean, what mother, you know, what mother would leave their other child behind? So it makes sense she's doing that. And also she, I think she feels like she's part of this revolution now. So she wants to fight, which makes me even respect this character even more. So she gets caught again, of course, and she winds up back with Commander Lawrence. This is a character that, she's not, he's not one of the three specific ones I'm gonna mention, but this guy was one of the few that I thought I liked in season two. But within these next three episodes, I'm really starting to hate him. Just the way his character is and the way he's kind of treating June and some of the other girls, and I feel like there's something suspicious about him. There's something that he's, it looks like he's trying to help, but I feel like he has another agenda in mind and I can't really pinpoint on what that is because in the third episode, he shows June something, which I, I won't say, but he kind of gives her a choice, an ultimatum for something. And it sounds like he's helping these women, but I just can't help think that he's behind something else. But she winds up back with him and Nonetheless, she's still trying to figure out a plan to get her daughter back, which she's taken to her daughter, but that doesn't work out, of course. But that's all mainly in the first episode. So as I already mentioned, there's three characters that I wanna talk about. Three that I feel bring a specific perspective within these three episodes and how they will take it in three different directions as we go through the rest of the season and beyond. The first one is June, which I kind of already went through her character. She's a very powerful character, and Elizabeth Moss is a great actress. I saw her in Mad Men, and the character she played was just as powerful, playing a woman, working with a bunch of men in an ad agency, and she proved herself to be unequal with them. And her playing June, she is tested and challenged every episode, I feel, and she just does not 
she refuses to fall. She keeps getting up and doing it again. And like, I love this character so much. And I just can't wait to see where she's going to take this character with the rest of this season and into season four and beyond, however long this show may run. But I compare her to kind of like the Katniss character in the Hunger Games movie because she eventually leads the rebellion in those stories. And I feel this move, this story of the Handmaid's Tale along with the Hunger Games Tale, they almost align with what's going on with how specific government or in the Hunger Games, it's the capital, how they're both ruling over everyone else and they are going to create this revolution to fight against them and I cannot wait to see that happen. But with June, that's one character that's kind of flowing through that direction. The other one, the second one, is Serena. She is a character that I did not like at all in the first, probably first season, most of season two. I just did not like how she treated everyone, especially June. And with the actress, which is Yvonne Strakowski, I think that's your pronounce her name, she is a great actress. I mean, for her, for, for me to hate her that much, and now here we are in season three. By the end of season two, I started to really grow fond of her and like her. And when a show does that to you, when you have a character that you can hate so much and you end up loving, that's a big deal. I mean, when you end up loving and going to hating the character, you know, that's something that you kind of see a lot in movies. But when it goes from that negative to something positive, that's really interesting to see that through a character. And with Serena, you see, I see that because now I feel really sorry for her because in I think it's episode two or three, she's with her mother. You get to introduce to her mother now and she's with her friends and it almost seems like Serena, she doesn't want to be a part of this anymore and she's already given up her baby, which was June's baby. She's feeling guilt in a way. You can see it on her face with some of these scenes that she's in and she does something pretty horrific in one of these episodes to her home, which I will not go any further with that, but if you've seen the episode, you know what I'm talking about. In that point there, that almost shown to me that she burnt that bridge of her life and she was ready to be a part of what June and the other women are because she knew that this is not right. And as with her character, I see her future with the character that's running with her going in a direction that I wouldn't have expected. And the third character I want to mention is Emily, played by Alexis Bledel. And I believe she won an Emmy as well for one of the last few seasons. And this woman, the character she plays, she is the one that escapes. And there's one scene I will mention that the first episode where she's with June's baby, she is in the water when she's about to get rescued, when she kind of get over to the border, to the other side, to Canada. And there's one part we, I was watching with my fiance, we, we could have sworn that the baby was dead. And I'm like, please do not make the show get any worse than it already is. We're in the first episode and you cannot do that to us. Thankfully, the baby's okay. And they're taken to a hospital there in Canada. And it's kind of, it's sad in a way because when Emily's character first gets there, she's kind of almost unfamiliar with how everyone's treating her, which is nice, hospitable, which is in America, in this world, that's not how she's being treated. She's being treated as nothing. She's being treated as garbage pretty much and she's being told you know oh we want to make sure that you're okay if you're healthy if the baby's healthy everyone's watching her and then all of a sudden she's walking to the hospital and she's being applauded for and cheered for and she doesn't understand it almost you can see on her face that she just doesn't know why this is happening she's just it's sad to know that this character she hasn't been around people like this or kindness like this that she's only been used to just this disgusting behavior. And then eventually Emily meets up with Luke, June's husband and June's friend. And you can tell, at least I can tell, that Emily is not really, it's not that she's not satisfied with her existence now in Canada, it's just that she can't get used to it. She's been living in this other world this whole time and it's almost like she's been brainwashed. There's a specific scene where she's with the doctor and she's being cared for and she's telling her, you know, do this, this and that, watch your cholesterol. And it's, with the look on her face, I thought at least it's like, wow, you know, someone's actually really caring for me. Someone's, you know, making sure that I'm all right. So that's something that I noticed. And that's why I'm thinking I'm liking Emily's character even more than I already did. Definitely not a character I hated. But I see these characters in Canada, they're, something's about to happen, this, these people here. I mean, they can't just live this happy life and have this season go on 
with just them talking, something's bound to happen. I don't know what, but I feel that eventually these characters in Canada are gonna meet up with June and everyone else. Something big is happening. And that goes back to what I was mentioning to the revolution. A revolution is bound to happen soon. Maybe at the end of this season, maybe the beginning of season four, because I'm pretty sure we're gonna get a season four, but something is happening. With this show, it's a type that the wheels turn very slowly. The writing is great, but it takes its time, and sometimes it goes back and forth with what's going on. Like I said, with June getting caught, she finally gets to escape, but she gets caught again, and she gets stuck where she began. And there's a reason for that, because if she began fighting, and they all begin teaming up against uh, the people that are starting this whole society, the show would be over. So they have to think of a way to keep the show rolling, and I think the writing is perfect. This is a show that I think could last for a few more seasons. Now don't overdo it, because eventually it's gonna get old, because you can only do so much. But I think so far, this season is starting off to a great start. There's 10 episodes left. What I like to do is hopefully review each episode after this individually so I can get more in depth with it. I just gave you a general idea of these three as a whole in this one video. But tell me what you guys think of my review for these three episodes. Give it a like if you like it. Tell me what you thought of these three episodes. Tell me what you are most excited about in The Handmaid's Tale and what is your favorite character. Otherwise, y'all have a great day. This is Ryan the Movie Guy saying I'll see you at the movies.